Put this football in your hand like that. Go ahead and launch. That's North Carolina, good nice. job. Nice. Well, they say it come from electric fire. Now, what went through your mind? Well, I felt peace that God had something better. And I looked down in the leaf, I said, oh, the Lord is blessing me with $10. I reached down there, dear one, and it had a one zero. It happened to us a lot. People would just roll up to us as we're out knocking on doors and say, what are you doing? Well, we're doing something incredible, and that is your story. Here's how we got here. Tell me your name. My name's Brittany. Brittany, I'm Todd. Nice to meet you. I'm going to blindfold you. And I'll put this football in your hand like that. Go ahead and launch. That's North Carolina. Good nice. job. Nice. <laughs> it's exciting. We'll have you close your eyes and make a dot on the map Just of North Carolina. Up. Yeah. OK, good job. Sort of out in the middle of nowhere, which is perfect. <laughs> we'll meet some really cool people there. Hey, sir. Can we borrow you for a second? Is you OK? All right. Okay. That's the answer I wanted to hear. What's your What's your name? Uh, Mike Fear, Rula Mike Fear. Mike? Mike Fear. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. What I need you to do, and it's really simple, is close your eyes and make a dot somewhere on this map of Clinton. Wow, that is one of the best dots I've ever seen. That's artistic-like. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll start right here where you started. You know where that is? Uh, Main Street Tunnel. Yeah. Oh, Main Street. all right. We are doing a television show. Okay. And it's called The Story Trek. Okay. What we do is we go to random neighborhoods around the country. Yes. And the first person we run into who agrees to be on TV, we tell their story. Oh. Would you be interested in telling us your story? Yes, sir. Would you really? Yes, sir. After knocking on a few doors, we ran across a woman who was driving down the road, stopping every so often, and picking up trash. How are you doing? We were about to get to know someone very special. What's your name? Rosa Fry. Rosa, I'm Todd. Yes, sir, like your frying chicken. Uh-huh. Would you be interested in telling us your story? Yes, sir. Would you really? Yes, sir. That would be great. Uh, what, what are you doing out here? I'm just picking up trash. People just litter, don't they? Yes, sir. But you know, I learned people need to be taught. Just like some people, they would do better, but they not taught. And Rosa is teaching by example. Her small way of making the community better. And you say that's kind of a tough place to live these days. Yes, sir. But it's getting better now. Not only is Rosa beautifying the community by picking up garbage, but she's beautifying the grounds of her church a church that no longer exists. I'm just an overseer right now. The Ho Holy Spirit appointed me as an overseer, not as a pastor, I'm not a pastor, I'm just an overseer. But her husband, Willie, was the pastor for decades. And he was a precious man to God. He, he loved Jesus. How long had the church been here? Uh, my husband bought it for some precious people of God in the year of 77. This is where Willie preached for more than 30 years before he passed away. A few years later, the church burned to the ground. Well, they say it come from electric fire. Now, what went through your mind? Well, I felt peace that God had something better. What an amazing way to look at something so tragic. It hasn't been easy, I'm sure, since your husband passed away. No, sir. but. God has blessed me. I had such a fulfilled life with him. It's easy to see that Rosa lives by faith. It was about two years after he went to be with the Lord. A bill came to my mailbox. It was a bill from the utility company that she couldn't pay. And it said I had to have $56.12 paid by Tuesday. Uh-huh. I said, it's, and it said, or else that uh, I would, uh, they was going to cut the service off. And I didn't worry about it. I just rested in the Lord. She says a miracle happened the next day. She was raking leaves at the grounds of the burned down church. And I looked down in the leaf. I said, oh, the Lord is blessing me with $10. I reached down there, dear one, 
and it had a one zero and another zero. Rosa was overcome with emotion. I started hollering. Yeah. My neighbor said she heard me holler. Wow. And I went round the church and round the house just praising the Lord, lifting my hands. She was able to pay that bill and buy some food. The Lord gave me more than enough to pay that bill. It was a solid $100 bill. All because she continues to care for a church that doesn't even stand. How important is it to you to see this church rebuilt someday? Well, it's very important to me because, and I believe God has put that in me, because one reason is that I know that, that God will that it be done, that God has a plan for this place. Rosa's faith is unquestionable, but the fight to bring back the church is formidable. We just going through a battle now with the city. Really? Because the city wants that property. After her husband died, the insurance lapsed, and the city charged $14,000 to have the old church demolished, another bill Rosa has not been able to pay. I hadn't been out. doing any fundraising, because we, my husband, he always taught, you know, try to keep in base with the early church. The uh -huh. apostles of old, he sort of keep how the Lord just worked miracles, yeah. and he believed God. And she's counting on another miracle that will allow her husband's church to one day be rebuilt. And you think you'll be able to do that someday? Yes, sir. It doesn't have to be a big place, but just enough where people can come here and worship the Lord and, and some praise them for God going on this property. Rosa says in her life, miracles happen all the time, as long as she looks for them. I heard my husband say, one step at a time. Amen. I'm not there yet. I got some more yet to go. Because when I see Jesus and myself, I got a long way to go. But I beg to differ. If more people were as kind and faithful and cared as much about their community as Rosa, more miracles would happen every day. So you were up picking up trash when we met you, just yes. making sure the church is as beautiful as it can be without it even being there, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> someday. Yes, someday. This is another one of my favorite stories. I just love how it played out, how it happened. She drove up and asked what we were doing, and then she's out cleaning up around the church, the church that's really no longer there. Uh, last I heard, she hadn't done this. The church has not been rebuilt, but her faith is incredible. If you liked this story, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you'll be notified when we do another story. And if you want to see the whole episode from South Carolina, go to byutv.org, search for the story trek, or go to the app store, download the BYU TV app, and you'll see all kinds of free content there, including the story trek. We'll see you for the next story.